We, denizens of the cosmos, are incredibly fortunate to be able to look out into the sky and see such amazing sights. Distant galaxies, vast and sparkling galaxy clusters, even the magnified and distorted images of some of the earliest structures to form in the universe. We can capture light that has been traveling for billions of years, tracing the history of our cosmos and illuminating the fundamental physics underlying reality. But in a hundred billion years, no matter how powerful a telescope we point into the depths of the cosmos, all we will see is darkness. By that time, most of the stars in the Milky Way will have burned out, and those remaining will be red and fading. Other galaxies, dragged away more and more rapidly by the expansion of the universe, will be lost to us forever. The universe had a beginning, and it will, inevitably, have an end. When astronomers first discovered that the universe was expanding, it provided a new understanding of the beginning of the cosmos. But it also brought up some uncomfortable questions. If the universe started out hot and dense and has been expanding and cooling ever since, what happens now? Will the universe keep expanding forever? Or will it someday re-collapse, throwing us all back into the hot, uncomfortably crowded conditions of the Big Bang? If the universe does keep expanding forever, what does that mean for our existence? Could we meet some alternative fate? We don't know for sure what our cosmic future holds, but if we extrapolate from history so far, we can make an educated guess. Mostly, it comes down to dark energy, the mysterious something causing the universe's expansion to accelerate. Currently, data seems to point to dark energy being a cosmological constant, which would mean it's a set, unchanging property of space-time. In that case, we can make straightforward predictions for our cosmic future. In about 100 billion years, the expansion will be so rapid that other galaxies will be invisible to us. In trillions of years, the last stars in the Milky Way will burn out. A lot of the remaining matter will eventually slide into black holes. Particles will decay, and black holes will evaporate into radiation, dispersing through an increasingly empty cosmos. Over time, expansion will have diffused matter and energy to such a degree that the entire observable universe will be only a fraction above absolute zero. Empty, cold, and dark. This end of the universe is called the heat death. Not because it's hot, but because after eons and eons of diffusion and decay, all that exists is the waste heat of the cosmos. The second law of thermodynamics says that disorder, what we call entropy, always increases in the future. When all matter is decayed and all energy is just waste heat, the universe reaches its maximum entropy state. From there, there's no way for the entropy to increase and no way to define a direction of time. There's no structure and no future, except through random statistical fluctuations in that cold, dark, empty cosmos, nothing meaningful can ever happen again. That's the heat death. Of course, it could be worse. In a lot of ways, the heat death is the best case scenario. It's slow, it's gentle, and by the time we get to it, everything interesting in the universe has already happened. But depending on what dark energy is, other possibilities could arise. If dark energy is something that can become more powerful, it's conceivable that instead of just moving galaxies away from each other, it could build up inside them, tearing apart galaxy clusters, galaxies, solar systems, planets, and eventually space-time itself in a spectacular apocalypse called a Big Rip. If dark energy turns out to be something even weirder, if it changes enough to reverse cosmic expansion, we could meet our end in a fiery Big Crunch, Galaxies would crash together, hot plasma would fill space, and even the ambient background radiation would eventually become hot enough to ignite the surfaces of stars. There are even more exotic possibilities. Some cosmologists have proposed cyclic models in which the start of our universe was the end of a previous cycle, and the end of ours could be followed by the start of another. There's also the possibility that our universe could undergo a dramatic quantum transition through a process called vacuum decay. It's astronomically unlikely over a timescale of trillions and trillions of years, but if it happened, it would create a bubble of a different and totally unsurvivable kind of space that would expand out at the speed of light and destroy everything. The universe right now is thought to be in a metastable state, which means that at any point anywhere in the universe, these bubbles of so-called true vacuum would form 
inside of it, the particles would be organized in such a way that they would be more stable. This phenomenon is really hard to study analytically with our mathematical, theoretical physics tools. So what we would like to do, ideally, would be to observe this process in nature. Right now what we can do, and what I do in my work, is to simulate the process of vacuum decay on a computer. And in particular, we would like to understand how these bubbles of nothingness form. Because if there is a way to understand how they form, then we can devise a method for preventing our own local universe from undergoing this phase transition. Based on everything we know about physics, the universe just can't continue unchanging forever. Evolution toward an end appears inevitable, but the precise future of our cosmos is still uncertain. We are getting clues. By peering into the most distant reaches of the universe, we learn about our past and about the processes that shaped the cosmos we see today. By delving into the biggest questions in astronomy and particle physics, we can create cosmological models and make inferences about how that evolution will continue. And along the way, we have the opportunity to learn amazing things about the fundamental workings of the cosmos. And we should, before it's too late.